Today I want to talk a little bit about this Neo Geo CD front loader system. Uh, this is a repair that I did for um, Mr. Adam Korlick. Uh, I also put a region mod in here, a uh, region switch. Uh, so I'm going to show you the insides, the things I did. Uh, I'm going to show the system in action with the region mod working. And also, uh, there's a neat little surprise in here for uh, a lot of you Sega CD fans. So um, let's check this out together. Okay, so before I open this up, I should tell you what the symptoms or problems were with this before I started working on it. I'm already done fixing it, but I want to show you everything I did. The main symptom was that this wouldn't play games. What was happening is the drive would open just fine. You'd put a disc in. It would go in, but then after three, four seconds, it would just spit the disc right back out again. Um, and it was that symptom when, when Adam told me about that, I said, sure, let me take a look at it, because that sounded a lot like what happens with a Sega CD drive uh, Model 1. And that's what happens when the belt wears out and stretches out and needs to be replaced. So um, I already took the screws out of this thing, so I can just take the top off and I remove the grounding plates as well, so you don't have to wait to watch me do that. This is really cool. This is a Sega CD Model 1 drive assembly. It's exactly the same, the, this whole thing right here. Exactly the same, minus, you know, the front cover being a different size. It's the exact same thing. You can see up in here, gearing's the same, lens is exactly the same, ribbon cable plugs in the same spot, so you could, you could probably swap drives and it would work just fine. Uh, I, I mean, obviously all the chips and motherboard components are different, but the exact CD drive assembly, this whole part here. So that told me to change the belt and that fixed the problem. Now I'm going to cut here for a moment so I can take some of this part and then I'll show you where the, uh, where the belt area is and, and how to go about changing that. Okay, now there are four screws to take the CD drive assembly out. They're in these um, plastic, I guess you'd call them mount points or stand points. There's four of them. There's one there. Just four Phillips screws down in there. You remove those and then you can lift the assembly out. But what I'm going to do here, I don't need to take that out because I've already replaced the belt. I'm going to show you where the belt is just from here without taking those screws out. Okay. Now here's something you can do if you got a small screwdriver. I don't know if you can see this big black gear in here, but you, turn, you spin that with the screwdriver and it'll start opening up the drive without having anything plugged in. All right, now as I turn the drive around here, now you'll want to have the CD assembly out to change the belt because you need to get to part of this plastic cover here that I'm pointing at from underneath. But it's this plastic cover that hides the belt. It's right underneath here, the, the bigger um, pulley for the belt there and, and the uh, motor part is over here. Um, but basically there's a little plastic catch for this cover. I just lifted it up here. There's one of them. And there's two more like that underneath on the bottom of the drive that you just pop out. But um, I'm gonna push that back into place now. There we go. Okay. So you take out the two catches for this cover and then you slide it out the front. And then the belt's just right there. It's, it's easy to change. I just usually use a small flathead screwdriver to uh, get it off the end of the, the two pulleys there. Now, while I'm putting this back together here, I'll tell you a little bit about the belts I use. I find that using, um, I, I order Xbox 360 uh, DVD drive belts. They make a great all-purpose just CD drive, optical drive, DVD drive replacement because they're a bit smaller 
than most of the originals, which is good because then you get a tighter connection between, you know, whole, a tension against the two pulleys. So that that's what you want to make sure it, it doesn't wear out too fast. Yeah, so that's what got the drive working again. Now, I want to tell you a bit about the region mod. This motherboard does not have markings on it like the top loader Neo Geo CD uh, drive systems do. So at first, when I started looking around the board, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. But then I, I recognized some chips that I had seen before. The, the areas to solder to for the region mod are underneath this chip. Now, I don't mean here, but on the bottom side of the motherboard. So you have to remove all these screws for everything, take the whole motherboard out to get to the bottom of it. Now, I'm not going to do that now, but I took a picture of it when I had it apart, which I'm going to show you here. And you can see where the points are to solder uh, three wires to for the region mod. Now, it, this is one of the easiest region mods to do. This is super simple. Three wires, that's it. You run them to a switch on the back of the system. Okay, now here in the second picture, I'm just showing you that that's just something I drew up in paint, where I ran my wires. So I soldered them in and they're going up across the bottom of the motherboard. Now, um, I'm gonna show you inside the system. Basically, this is the top side of the motherboard and those wires are soldered underneath here on the bottom and they're just running up this direction all the way through here until they're coming out the bottom of the board and up to the switch that I've mounted here. Now this switch is a, a single pull double throw switch, but it's the on off on type. What I'm getting at here, let me spin this around and show you. This switch is the kind that has a middle as well. So meaning this is on, off, on. Now what that does is it gives us three settings. So when it's in the middle, since that's off, that's just our default um, Japanese setting. Uh, this, if you go to the left, that's now US. And then when you go all the way to the right, that's European. So it's just a simple switch. It's it's mainly people usually use it for two settings and that's what we're doing, but we need an off setting in the middle. So it's kind of confusing. So even though it's it's a double throw switch for two two contacts, it's, it's doing like three functions for us because we still need an off setting to have the uh, Japanese region there as well. So those three wires are just coming up here. I've got my... Um, this wire here going to the left is the US, the one coming to the middle is Japanese, and the one going to the right side is European. Um, yeah, so really cheap, inexpensive, very easy to do. Um, I mean, the, the only flaw of having a switch instead of a UniBIOS is you have to switch it before you turn on the system and you don't get, you know, those extra options in the, um, you know, the BIOS menu to change things around. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is really the way to go for uh, any Neo Geo CD system. Now the top loaders are labeled. I think I mentioned that earlier. So it's even easier because you can look at the motherboard and it says where US, where European is. So, um, oh, and I should mention that diagram that uh, that first picture I showed that, that was labeled where the US and European was, uh, that was something I found on um, someone's Twitter online as I Google searched. So uh, I, I can't remember the person's name, but I'll, I'll credit them here. I'll just put their name at the bottom of the screen. So uh, thank you, guy. <laughs> okay, and uh, now we'll get to, uh, I'll put this back together off camera and then we'll, uh, we'll power it on and I'll show you the couple different regions in action. All right, so I've got everything put back together here. Everything's plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and just boot this first in, you know, regular default uh, Japanese region, just so you can see the difference for those of you who maybe haven't, you know, seen a Neo Geo CD system before. All right, start button. I've got um, Magician Lord in here, just because it's a, a game I could think of offhand. Um, that gives you text at the beginning where you can see the difference. Lots of games 
will boot up, regardless of region, will still boot up with English on the main title screen. Where Magician Lord, as soon as you hit start to start up the game, you get that story sequence. So we'll be able to see the difference there once I uh, do change the region in a bit. Okay. Start. Okay, so as you can see, this is just the default region here. We got the story going through in Japanese. Okay, that's enough for you to get the idea. Let me power off the CD player now and change to US region. Okay, turn it back on. And uh, this main title, uh, this main screen, not this, but just after this where it shows the tracks on the CD, that should be in English as well. Yes, there we go. Good. Okay, start. And we'll wait for the game to load back up again. Lots of the fighting games don't have text in them till later on where you'd see a difference, usually like at the end of the match, you know, where the two characters say something. Otherwise, usually at the beginning of each game, you don't get something where you'd notice the difference otherwise. Except for, you know, the blood difference, how certain regions will have the blood and other ones not. Okay. Alright, there we go. So we've got our English story sequence now. I assume it would be the same in European mode. I, don't, I really don't think there's a difference with this game, whether it's in European or US, because obviously it's not... Not a fighting game, so you wouldn't have blood in it. But you'd honestly need to ask a Neo Geo CD collector that, because I'm not super well versed in all the little differences with these games from region to region. Yeah, the Neo Geo CD system, it's it's a pretty cool thing. It's it's just a bummer that some of the games are so large that you start to notice some of those load times here and there. I think the CD format worked really well for the PC Engine or Sega CD because those games didn't have so many loading times in them. I mean, another part is the Neo Geo, most of the games are fighting games, so you notice those loading times more because there's always those breaks in between where it needs to load again. Whereas on, you know, Sega or PC Engine, you're, you're you, you know, you got more platformers, shooters, RPGs, so there's just less, you, you, get, you get to play for longer periods of time before you load again. But a game like this, Magician Lord, this loads up rather fast. And now that I'm already in the story mode, it just goes right into the game. So, you know, that tells me it loaded into memory, uh, you know, or, or RAM, whatever you want to call it, when it first loaded up the disc to the title screen. So this game isn't nearly as large as some of the other, you know, later Neo Geo releases. But, um... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.